Hello, I got a great one for you. Another perfect example of academic hubris, stupidity, and bestial ignorance just straight from the pits of hell. Um, of course, I've written endlessly about magnetic vortices, and uh, so have other people. I'm certainly the first person in the world to explain the same. Even Walter Russell never explained. Of course, Walter Russell never in any of his writings ever defined what a field was. His followers were absolutely crazy. They actually remind me of like blood drinking Satanists. So, I mean, that's after he died. I mean, he didn't uh, develop that uh, ranshackled group of, uh, of uh, oddballs, but uh, he writes about them endlessly. But apparently, according to breaking news, Berkeley laboratories have discovered the world's first polar vortices in a ferroelectric material. Wow! Only required like a few million dollars worth of equipment. Well, that's interesting. Um, so apparently Berkeley made a discovery that uh, vortexes exist in a ferroelectric material. First ever observation. Kiss my ass! You are so full of crap! I mean, have you lost your damn mind? Oh, let's see. Let's look at my buddy's invention from 2008, the ferro cell. Not only can you witness vortices on this thing with a magnet, even without power with, with this one that's very sensitive, I mean, he invented this back in 2008. I mean, have you lost your mind? Let's look at Walter Russell's book here. This book is full of so many diagrams on vortexes. Well, there's a big one right there. Hmm. On and on. Vortex, 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 vortex. Oh my god, look, a bunch of other vortices. Hmm. Walter Russell. This guy actually was using no equipment. He was just using something between his ears called a brain. And uh, he'd actually go in these uh, sort of hypnotic states, kind of like uh, Edgar Casey. You know, not literally, but basically, really. And uh, he kind of unraveled uh, some of the interesting secrets of the universe. Uh, he, didn't never under he never defined what a field was, and he didn't understand the difference between uh, dielectricity or electricity. And he didn't understand a lot of the sim uh, more important stuff. Anyway, he gets about 70% of the stuff that he writes uh, accurate. So, actually, this is the way academia works, because Einstein himself never invented anything. He never discovered anything. I mean, Nikola Tesla called him a, a fuzzy-haired crackpot. There is a book out there written by, I think it's a Danish guy. It's, I think, what is it? It's almost 2,000 pages long. It's a gigantic book. Everything that Einstein ever wrote, he stole from somebody else. Um, he got his ideas uh, for C squared, and of course that equa equation is incorrect, but he got those ideas not of his own brain, from but uh, from Hanway Poincaré. See, what academia likes to do is that people actually discover things, like Walter Russell, my buddy's ferrocell invention, and my book on magnetism. And I've made a lot of really unique discoveries on magnetism, especially actually defining what the vortex is, which Russell never does, nor does anybody else. I define that in the book, and in the upcoming editions of the book. And uh, additionally, saw some really other fascinating things, including the definition of polarity, uh, where the phase shift uh, retardation comes from, and that uh, magnetism follows a Poincaré disk model of projective geometry, and that magnetism is a reciprocating precessional hyperboloid. It is the ejecta of the loss of inertia, which necessitates reciprocation. And that's kind of mind-boggling to a lot of people. But the way academia works is that, uh, you know, all this stuff like my stuff and Russell's stuff and, uh, you know, my buddy's invention, it'll be out there for ages. But we're not working in a university setting, publishing articles uh, that these uh, these ass-sniffing morons uh, read. And when they discover something, it's like, ah, it's the first observed, it's the first observation ever of uh, whatever it is. It's like, no, you, you pathetic, mental midget, you know, uh, uh, microcephalic brained moron. You know, you never discovered this. I discovered this. Walter Russell discovered this. My buddy's invention from seven years, eight years prior to your stupid discovery. Oh no, it's the first observable vortex in a ferroelectric material. This is a ferroelectric material that you can see a vortex under, and this was discovered eight years prior to this. So, Berkeley, kiss my ass. This is how academia works.
These people won't acknowledge anything unless they discover it. Oh, look, we discovered it. No, moron. You didn't discover a damn thing. You rediscovered what other people have already discovered. People that were a lot wiser than you, a lot smarter than you. Oh, but we needed this multi-million dollar machine to discover it, which is, you can't see it, but that's the machine down there in the bottom. Nikola Tesla talked about this, talked about uh, not needing a gigantic laboratory and tons of equipment. He said you needed solitude and uh, a sharp mind. That's not his exact quote, but that's basically what he says. So, This is yet another validation of the ignorance, hubris, stupidity, and the brain-dead buffoonery of academia. These people are mental midgets. The only thing that gives them credence is a worthless piece of paper hanging on the wall and all their little pathetic blind minions that uh, suck at the breast of their ignorance. So, congratulations for not discovering something and saying you did discover it. You must be very proud of yourselves. 